back, uh, ladies and gentlemen, to Salon Graphite's channel, a producer of the world's highest grade graphite or soon to be producer for the Electrified Future. Joining us as always, Donald Baxter, the chief executive officer, is going to give us some insights after just visiting the property yet again over there for a month. Welcome back, sir. Thanks, Kyle. It was a long haul. It was a trip that uh, was supposed to be two weeks and I ended up staying there a month. This sort of things, you know, Sri Lankan time is a little different than, than what we're trying to do here. But uh, uh, anyway, all, all good. So. Yeah, I appreciate it. Um, do you want to just give us some insight? Because I know there's been a lot of, um, obviously, decisiveness around the political situation there, but you guys are actually moving forward pretty progressively on the front. Yeah, it was. I was quite impressed. So I was last there in June, and at that point, there were, you know, long fuel queues or, you know, almost zero fuel. You know, we were having to scramble and buy buy fuel We could because we had foreign currency, we could buy it. Um, but, um, you know, there were some special ways to do that. Um, so now, um, you know, no fuel queues, uh, there's, there's a, there's a QR system, a QR code system where people are sort of, let's say rationing fuel, but they're keeping it orderly, uh, people buying, they're allowed a certain quotient, a certain amount, uh, uh, either a week or a month, but, um, you know, we had no, no issues, uh, me traveling around and, and, uh, we still have our, our fuel supply storage. Uh, but, um, yeah, I was quite, quite impressed. Uh, Colombo, the capital city is hustle and bustle again buses are running people are you know out and about and, and uh hotels are busy um so not a lot of tourists yet still i guess the word is still getting out but um it was nice to see sort of people getting back to somewhat of a normal life and uh it just makes it makes everything easier it makes you know people are not you know stuck in you know when you're trying to meet a government official and they're or, or a bureaucrat they're they're not stuck in a fuel fuel queue somewhere so you know start starting to make things a little you know in sri lankan time a little easier to get things done let's just say at this point yeah for sure and i definitely appreciate those insights but you also uh, have been kind of expanding with the, some of these uh, university uh, computer modeling for those minds themselves with k1 and m1 do you want to just kind of talk a little bit about the on ground there and just exactly what you guys are projecting out for these minds yeah, exactly. So what what I had an issue with is we, from the start, um, we you know the previous um, management uh, went straight into you know we're going to develop these mines and we're we're, we're it did a minimal amount to you know we have a, we have two small four if you want on one resource reports, but uh, it's not enough for you know full solid planning underground mining and and so what I'm doing with what we have is compiling all the information we have. And uh, working with uh, one of the universities, they have all the you know proper computer modeling capabilities. Um, we have a couple of PhD uh, geologists. Uh, uh, you know, one is an actual QP registered QP that we can. So it can be easier for me to talk about production and what we can do, and you know, month by month, year by year. Um, so I'm just sort of getting those tools set, and it's it's been a, a little while coming, and and all of the uh, disruptions and closures of things ha hasn't helped me get it done. But I spent a fair bit of time. Uh, with that so getting models set for k1 and m1 and then they'll, they'll both be a work in progress but you know you know investors want to know how when you're producing graphite how much you're producing per month and and this will give me the tools i need to, to be able to um answer those questions um you know fairly fairly easily and then plan uh we'll have to do some more underground drilling uh which is a normal practice for for, for underground mining so i'm sort of getting it set set to a little, little higher standards uh, than we've had before but uh I'm quite um, quite happy with what I'm seeing, and and uh, we'll be able to um, you know project you know tonnages, uh, future tonnages a lot easier uh, in in the very near term. Yeah, I feel like you've kind of been uh, just kind of getting through these hurdles through 2022 and kind of just setting yourself up to hopefully see some of these huge catalysts come into play in 2023. Do you want to just talk uh, briefly about where you kind of see yourselves moving into next year? Yeah, I mean, I see obviously I see two mines in in you know hoisting graphite, and uh, one other thing I was doing was looking at another property. Uh, which I'm quite excited about. Um, there's there's a new law passing or coming around, in, in which makes it easier for operations. Um, so I've, I'm I'm looking at a couple of things. So I'm looking at you know we got mine one, mine two, uh, and then you look at mine three, and and looking at it from the standpoint of of you know we have enough information on them that we can get into into you know near term production relatively quick. The terrain is such that it's an easier access. Uh, it's a hillside, so it's more adits than sinking shafts, and then you get more access right directly to the to the veins. Uh, the vein systems are, are numerous, so we're seeing in the structure. So uh, we'll we'll be talking able to talk about it a bit more in the, the near term. But it's um, it looks um, uh, you know I'll have a small technical report done soon on it. So I'm pretty excited by that. I'm you know basically our biggest task is to you know get many small mines running. 
so we can you know answer more of the questions that the OEMs are asking us. You know, how much graphite can you give us, and when? And so we're we're getting ourselves set for that. And, and you know, as we see, you know, the interest growing, I think the timing is just perfect for us to be you know getting ourselves finally set to where we can answer these questions and where we can you know show some real physical um, progress, which is I'm, I'm excited about that too. So um, yeah, so it's again with it, with the political situation settled down. Um, I was, I was actually hoping for a photo op with the new president this trip, but um, between IMF meetings and then COP2070 COP was off, off in Egypt and things, so it didn't quite work this time, but uh, they're quite keen to meet with us. I spent a bit of time with the Canadian High Commissioner as well, just to get ourselves set and uh, you know registered there and between the Canada relations. And, and it, it just sort of helps to be, to be there and a little more on the radar with, with uh with the international community um, and looking to help out, you know, Sri Lanka. So it gets us a little more front and center as well too. So, uh, so overall it was, a, it was a good trip and uh, um, I'm excited by the, you know, seeing sort of getting back to somewhat normal uh, there. Well, on that note, I definitely appreciate these insights today, Don. Well, I'll pass the question off to the viewers. We'd love to know what you guys think about all this in that uh, comment section below. And consider subscribing because as catalysts continue to come down the wire, of course, we'll update you here, but stay cool, stay awesome. And as always, we look forward to catching you in the next one.